Hey guys, welcome back to Reignited. In this video, we're going back to basics. We're installing a lowering kit on my 1986 Chevy C10 square body. Stay with me. All right, you guys, if you've been following along the channel, you'll know that we just finished up our last project, a 2011 Ford F250 Super Duty Diesel. That was a huge project. I ended up having to rebuild the entire engine, had to cab off. It was a complex nightmare. In this video, what I really wanna do is I wanna get it back to basics. I wanna focus on something that you guys can easily accomplish for yourselves in your own garage or even out on the street. So in that vein, I'm not even going to use my lift. We're gonna do it on the ground with jack stands. And what we're gonna do is we're going to install a lowering kit front and rear on my 1986 Chevy C10 that I put the 6.4 Hemi engine into. Now in the front, which we're going to cover in this video, I'm gonna cover the rear suspension in the next video, but in this video, we're covering the front. The truck already has two inch drop spindles on it, which is great, but it's not near low enough for me. What we're going to do is install three inch drop coil springs and that's gonna give me five inches of total drop and that's pretty much exactly where I wanna be. Now for the rear suspension that you'll see in the next video, we're going to do an axle flip kit and generally that will give you about six inches of total drop. So you have five inches in the front, six, in six inches in the rear and I really think that's going to give me the overall stance that I'm looking for with this truck. But again, this is just bolt-on stuff. There's nothing fancy here. I'm not going to be doing any sort of fabrication on these ones. This is easily something you can replicate yourself. As you guys, so I'm actually very interested to see what the actual overall drop of these springs are. They say they're a three inch drop spring. Who knows what they'll be, whether it be a two inch or a four inch or whatever. So what I'm going to do is, first thing I wanna do is I wanna measure from the ground up to the fender well. That way I can get a base measurement before we put the springs in. And then after we put the springs in, I'll measure again and see what the actual difference is. Now, of course, whenever you're doing a spring swap on a vehicle, it does tend to settle a little bit after you drive around. So the overall drop will be usually a little bit lower after you drive around for a bit, but it'll at least give us a starting metric to go by. So in this case, our starting measurement is 32 inches and 5 sixteenths. So 32 and 5 sixteenths of an inch to start with. All right, let's go ahead and pull these front coil springs out and take a look at them. I just got these off of eBay. I believe they were $79. I have no idea how you can sell a product for that cheap. So I'm not expecting the, the quality of these to be utterly amazing, but I just want to toss them in and see. I mean, for $80, literally, can, can you really go wrong? Well, yeah, you can with ride quality and whatnot, but let's give it a shot, see what they look like. They appear to be blue. <laughs> yes, they are. Well, that wasn't exactly in the listing that they were blue. I thought they were black, but whatever. I think it'll be all right. Well, they certainly look very sturdy. Um, they're, they're thicker than I th expected that they would be, so that's a good start. And they at least appear on the surface to be the same height together, so <laughs> that's another good start. All right, let's get into this. All right, so our first step here is we want to go ahead and raise the vehicle up and put it on jack stands. Uh, the only thing to note here is that you want to raise it up far enough to where the lower control arm can swing down far enough to actually remove the coil springs. So you actually want to get it fairly decently high on the jack stands. Always make sure that they are supported properly. You're on a level surface, all of that be as safe as possible, but you do need to get it up off the ground a fair distance. All right, raise it up on jack stands. Let's go ahead and get this wheel off of here. Wow, this is really nice. I'm, I'm able to see how I can potentially build the headers for this thing. Huh, cool. All right, well, time to get this wheel off of here. In case any of you were wondering, this is not the wheel and tire package that is going on this truck. These are absolutely hideous. Um, these are just a set of rollers that I found that actually fit the bolt pattern so I could actually move the vehicle around um, because the factory wheels had some really rotted out tires and I didn't feel like throwing tires on them just so I could roll around. So these are just some stand-ins for right now. Yes, they're hideous. No, they will not be staying. All right, so the very first thing we're gonna do in here is we're going to go ahead and unbolt the sway bar from the lower control arm. We wanna get everything that's attached to the lower control arm 
out of there so it'll swing easily. So we'll unbolt the sway bar on both sides, that's always important. Then unbolt the tie rod assembly on there. We're gonna take the caliper off of here. I think we're going to leave the rotor assembly on there because I'm just gonna leave it attached with the spindle. And then we need to remove the shock as well. And then we'll move on from there. All right, so we got the shock off, we got the caliper off of there, uh, we got the tie rod off and the sway bar unbolted. Now what we're going to do is you do not want to try to remove this spindle without having some support for this lower control arm, otherwise the spring's just gonna go boom and pop out of there and give you all sorts of problems. So very dangerous, don't do that. So next step is we're gonna put a jack under here and you're gonna put a good amount of tension on it to where it actually comes up a little bit because you do not want that spring to uncoil. And then after we have the tension on the lower control arm, that's when we're going to undo the top spindle bolt here and get the upper control arm out of the way. And then you can slowly release the pressure on the jack and it'll drop the control arm down and out of the way and you can remove the spring. Let's do it. All right, everything is disconnected. You can see the spindle is pushed out of the way. We're just gonna lower the jack smoothly now and hopefully the spring will just slide out of there nice and easy. So technically we are loose in there. We'll just have to finagle a little bit, get the jack out of the way, and we'll be able to slide it out of there. There we go. All right, easy peasy. All right, now it's time to slip the new spring in there. And as always, remember where the end of the spring goes, there's generally going to be a pocket for it that you want to slide that into. So make sure it lines up like it's supposed to, right about there. And we're gonna raise this thing up into place. So in order to get 
the ball joint fully seated in here to where you can get a nut on the backside, you're probably gonna have to exert some leverage on the upper control arm. So if you have a pry bar of some sort, just stick it in there and just lever it down enough so you can actually get a nut on the backside there. All right, now I'm not gonna put any sort of a cotter pin in here right now because I'm actually going to take all of this back apart again before final assembly because I wanna clean all this up and paint it. But for right now, we'll put it back together again so I can set it down and see just how much of a difference this made. All right, so you saw just how straightforward that process was. Really not a complicated procedure at all. That took maybe an hour to do that, and that was me going slow. So I'm gonna go ahead and knock out the driver's side really quick, and then we'll set this thing down and see what our overall ride height difference really is. Right, guys, as you saw, I just got the driver's side spring swapped in there. That was even easier than the passenger side because this time around I kind of knew the process to it. it. Took me like 20 minutes to throw that thing in there. So honestly, this is a very, very simple job. On a technical level, I'd probably give it a two out of 10. And I only give it a two because you just need to be careful when you're removing the old spring. Just, just be very careful there. You don't want that thing popping out of there uh, and injuring you. So that's the only reason why I give it a two. Other than that, it's very, very simple, just basic hand tools required to do it. Anyone could do it in their garage or even out in the street and it doesn't take very long at all. So let's get this thing lowered down and see what it looks like. So we got to drop down. Let's go ahead and measure again now that we have it dropped down. Again, we're going to measure this fender well to the ground. Let's see what our difference was. So right now it's reading at 30 inches and three quarters. So 30 and three quarters inches. And before our measurement was 32 and five sixteenths. So let's do some quick math here. So essentially we're looking at about an inch and a half of drop. Now, yeah, I was definitely hoping for a little bit more than that, but the stock springs may have been sagged out after all this time, so they may have already drooped a little bit more. Um, and also, as I mentioned before, this suspension could still settle, which it probably will. Plus, I still need to put about 100 or maybe a little bit more pounds of weight in the front here with the radiator and accessories and everything else. So there'll be some more weight on the front. It might drop it down a little bit more. I'd like, ideally I'd like to see this fender liner about an inch further down and that may still be a possibility. But that's the front done. You can see how simple that was. Now we're gonna move on to the rear, which is going to be in the next video. And it's definitely going to be a little bit more complicated. There's a little bit more work involved there. There's some cutting in there. But honestly, it's still going to be a fairly simple job overall. So we'll see you next time when we ignited.